got a crappy Wi-Fi signal, you might be wondering, why can't you just add a second router to your network and get twice the coverage? It turns out you actually can. Although it takes a little bit of effort and there are some caveats that you should be aware of. Before we dive in, we'd like to thank our good friend Joel Crane for helping us out with this walkthrough. Step zero, it's actually important to know what your typical Wi-Fi router does. It not only emits a Wi-Fi signal, it's also responsible for moving traffic between the internet and your home, which is the actual routing part, as well as ensuring that the right traffic goes to the right device. So a video you're trying to watch on your phone in bed won't instead get sent to your TV in the living room. This job of sending data to the correct place is typically handled by a feature in your router called the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. How DHCP does this is by assigning every gadget on your home network a private IP address, usually starting with 192.168.something. But why do you need to know this in order to add a second router? Well, regardless of exactly how many routers you have, only one of them should have DHCP turned on. If more than one router tries to assign private IP addresses, they'll often end up conflicting with each other and assigning different addresses to the same device, which can cause all kinds of errors when that device tries to communicate. So how do you ensure that this does not happen. We'll tell you right after we thank Linode for sponsoring today's video. Linode is a powerful Linux-based cloud computing service from Akamai that's affordable and easy to use. They have a large marketplace with one-click apps to quickly deploy servers for website development, file hosting, database management, video hosting, or even video game servers. Their affordable pricing has no hidden fees and you only pay for what you use. Best of all, Linode has data centers worldwide and 100% human 24-7, 365 customer service that's reachable by phone, email, or social media. Sign up for a free account today and get a $100 60-day credit on your new Linode account at the link below. Start by hooking up your second router to a PC with an ethernet cable. Just use one of the LAN ports and manually assign it an IP address in your router settings. Make sure it is not something that's already being used by another device in your network. You can check by going to your primary router setting page and looking for a list of connected devices or clients. Just pick an address that is not on this list. For example, if your primary router is using 192.168.1.1, try giving the second router an address of 192.168.1.2, if nothing else is using that. Reboot your second router, and once it's back up, go back into the settings and disable DHCP, leaving it enabled only on the one router that's actually connected to your modem. Some routers call this AP mode, where AP stands for access point. Essentially, you're telling that second router just to emit a Wi-Fi signal while leaving all the actual routing to the primary router. After you've done this, connect your primary and secondary routers via their LAN ports. Not the WAN port, very important, not that one and configure the second router to use the same network name or SSID and password as your existing Wi-Fi network. That way, any devices in your home should roam between the two routers, locking on to whichever one has the best signal. But for that to work, the physical placement of these routers needs to make sense. Put your second router somewhere far enough away so there isn't a bunch of signal overlap, which you can roughly measure with the smartphone signal strength app, but not so far away that you're leaving a big dead zone in between them. You want a healthy Venn diagram. This process can obviously involve some trial and error. And to make matters more complicated, many smart devices are quite stupid in the sense that they'll stay connected to a weak access point for longer than they really should. If you're finding that this is the case when using a second router, you might just want to name it something different and just connect to it manually. Of course, if this all just sounds like a huge pain, it is a bit easier just to get a mesh networking kit off the shelf if you need better Wi-Fi coverage. But if you really do want to use that second router you just have laying around anyway, this guide should, at the very least, beat strapping a clothes hanger wrapped in tinfoil to your phone. We all have our embarrassing past. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit us up in the comments section with your ideas for topics that we should cover in the future.